Hi guys! So last month I did a quick painting just for fun. I had this frozen coloring book that I got at the dollar store, and I love the 2D art style of the illustrations inside, but I wanted to see if I could maybe paint this Elsa with oil paints to make her look a little bit more like the Elsa from the movies. And this is what I came up with. So a sweet friend asked if I could make a video explaining how to do this. I'm not sure how helpful this will be, because uh, quite honestly, I never know what I'm doing. <laughs> and obviously coloring book paper is not exactly meant for oil paints. The paper did absorb the paint more than canvas would, so it was a little more difficult to blend. Some of the vibrancy of the colors was lost, and it did bleed through the page a little with some oily splotches on the back. But it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. I could have easily painted over it if I wanted to paint the image on the back too. So basically, coloring book pages are not the ideal surface for oil paints, but it was a lot of fun. I liked the fact that I could paint over lines and repaint them however I wanted. So I'm gonna paint this picture of Anna this time, because Anna is my favorite. The first thing I always need to do is find reference photos. I'm gonna be using a handful of different pictures of Anna, but mainly this one and this one. And I should mention the medium I'm using for this is Liquin. I've actually never used anything else, so I honestly don't know if linseed oil or any other kind of medium would work on coloring book pages. I mean, nothing's gonna work perfectly for this, but if you wanted to try something else, go for it and just experiment. I just like Liquin because it makes your paint easier to work with, it speeds the drying time, and it gives it a nice sheen that's not too shiny. You can get it at basically any craft store or online. And I'm just using a regular round brush and a smaller brush a little later for some of the finer details, but nothing fancy, any brush you have will do. So as I compare these two images, right off the bat I'm seeing that Anna's face is a lot rounder than the more angular looking illustration, and I'm going to need to tweak her eyes and a few other things as well. So I'm going to put some white on my palette and burnt umber. Burnt sienna may have been a better choice for this painting, but I'm out, so I'm working with what I got. I'm also going to very gracefully squeeze some remnants of yellow ochre, which is a great portrait color, a couple different kinds of reds and blues, and of course some liquid, and that should be enough to get started. So I'm just mixing the color that I want and diluting it with liquid. It's entirely up to you how much of your medium you want to add. The more you add, the more transparent your paint will be. I'm starting out with some blues and purples for her skin tone, I'm basically just identifying the colors I see in her, in her face and painting it in sort of an exaggerated way. And then I'm just blending and layering and toning the colors down as I go. I usually start out with darker colors because traditionally oils are meant to be painted dark to light. So it's the opposite of what you would do if you were doing a pencil drawing or a watercolor. In both of those cases, you would move from light to dark. But with oil painting, and of course you can do it however you want, but traditionally speaking, you start with the dark and you gradually move to the lighter tones. This can be a little tricky to get used to if you're new to oil painting, but for me I find it works out better this way because when I do the highlights last, there's less chance of me accidentally muddying them up. And adding the highlights at the end is always my favorite part in the eyes, or on the tip of the nose, or in the hair. That's when it feels like the painting just pops and comes to life. So I've been reshaping the eyes and face shape a little, and you'll probably notice that she looks a little scary at times. <laughs> Some of you have heard me talk about the quote ugly stage before, but I think this is a good time to mention it again. I've found that every piece of art that I do, especially portraits, seem to go through a similar process. It starts out looking okay with all kinds of potential at the beginning until it suddenly just looks like a truck hit it and it's just bad. 
It's hard to get a full appreciation for it when the process is sped up like it is here because it passes by in just seconds, but in real time, these ugly stages last hours or even days. When I first started doing portraits, I always felt discouraged when I got to that point. I guess I believed that a good piece of artwork should look pretty throughout every stage of its creation, so I felt like I must be doing something wrong. But I found that as I kept working, it would slowly look better until I finally finished with something that wasn't perfect, but it was something I could be happy with. I thought I was the only one who had ugly stages in their art process until I heard an extremely talented portrait artist mention that all of his pieces go through an ugly stage as well. And that was kind of a relief for me. I realized that it's actually a very common thing for really anything we're creating in life, and it's a necessary step before reaching the end. So now when I hit that stage, I remind myself, this is okay, this is normal. Unfortunately, I think that ugly stage is the place where a lot of us give up and just abandon a project, because we don't always realize that if we just kept going, it would get better. I heard someone say recently that art is less about talent and more about perseverance, and I totally agree with that. So after I started working on her hair here, I changed my mind about it and decided to change her hairstyle to make it look more like it does in the movie. So I painted over the lines and repainted it according to my references. I actually ended up painting over and changing a lot of this by the time it was finished, but the illustration underneath did work as a helpful guide throughout. I had some difficulty mixing the right color for Anna's cloak. In the movie, it's this gorgeous, deep violet. Uh, all the colors in that movie were gorgeous, but purples can be a little tricky to mix. The best advice I heard is to mix a warm blue with a cool red. So I used ultramarine blue and a crimson red, and I got a color pretty close to what I wanted. I could have gone more to the blue side but it's actually closer to the right color than it appears in this video because the lamp I was using gave off a really warm yellowy light and uh, for those who remember the color wheel, yellow is the opposite of purple and opposite colors neutralize each other. So my lighting is making the violet look a little duller in this video, but I'll put up a more accurate image of the painting at the end. I'm adding some of the smaller details in her dress in yellow ochre. I hear a lot of people say they have a hard time painting or drawing because they have very unsteady hands. They say they can't even draw a straight line. <laughs> And I totally get it, I can't draw a straight line either, thank goodness for rulers. Sometimes I have a little bit of a tremor in my hands from my Graves disease. It's not super bad, it's barely noticeable most of the time, but sometimes it gets a little annoying when I'm doing fine detail work. I wish I had more advice to give in that regard. The best thing in general you could do if you have shaky hands is to paint bigger because when you're painting small, you're relying more on the smaller muscles in your fingers and wrists, uh, whereas when you paint bigger, you can use the muscles in your whole arm and even your back and torso, and that can help steady your lines. But of course, that's not really an option when you're painting in a small coloring book. <laughs> so another thing I would suggest is to make sure you get enough to eat before doing teeny tiny details, because a lot of people shake more when they're hungry or tired. Other than that, the only thing I can say is to keep trying. Sometimes I have to draw a line and paint over it a dozen times or more before it feels right. and I'm gonna cheat a little later and use a pen for some of the details.
There is no rule that says you have to paint right side up. So like I said, this paper absorbs the paint pretty badly, so I had to do several layers of paint to make sure the colors looked more true. That made this sort of a messy job. <laughs> so definitely make sure you put paper or plastic down or whatever you do to prepare beforehand because oil paints definitely stain. I'm just using the pen nearest to me, which is a Tombow brush pen to do these details. And then I'm using a white gel pen to add some tiny highlights. The oily marks bled through on the back of this painting a lot more than they did on the first. Probably because I was a lot more careful with the first and I just <laughs> went to town on this one. So just in case, make sure you're not totally in love with the picture on the back before choosing a page to paint. So this is the end result. It took about seven hours of actual painting over the course of a couple weeks. It's not perfect, but it definitely reminds me of the movie a little more than it did before. So I hope you enjoyed this. Love you guys.